Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and even ethnicity results with my calculator of an Anatolian Neolithic farmer from Barsin in Turkey. Uh, the ID, uh, the sample ID is I0709, that's I0709. This individual is male, his mitochondrial lineage is U3 and his, um, his Y DNA what is it? It's H2M. I don't know what H2M is. I didn't even know that was a legitimate Y DNA called H2M. Okay, so his Y DNA is H2M. His mitochondrial lineage is U3. Let's go ahead and check where he's from. This is the location where he is from. You can see coordinates on the screen. These are GPS coordinates. Uh, 40 degrees, 40 latitude north, 29 latitude, latitude east. Or is it? Is it latitude or is it something else? Longitude, yeah. 20, uh, 29 longitude east, that's what it looks like to me. And let's go ahead and check his results with my trade predictor. Let's get into his actual autosomal DNA. This is what he scores with Nashakot. So with Nashakot, he seems to be scoring um, light brown or hazel eyes, but more likely to have light brown eyes than hazel. Uh, definitely unlikely to have any other eye color. Uh, when it comes to his hair color prediction, looks like brown hair is the number one prediction here, followed by black hair, and once again, very unlikely to have any other hair color. When it comes to his skin color prediction, it looks like intermediate or olive skin is his skin tone, and once again, quite unlikely to have any other skin tone. Uh, when it comes to his predicted eye picture, this is the, um, the picture that my tool printed for him, kind of uh, eye image what it might look like. It looks like a light brown eye to me, so... Um, that's because he's scoring the largest category he's scoring is light brown eyes. That's why the picture is the way it is. And for hair texture, it looks like he is scoring wavy hair. Wavy or curly hair, actually. Either either wavy or curly hair. But there's also a pretty significant likelihood of straight hair for him as well. So pro possible and quite probable for him to have straight hair as well. Uh, let's go ahead and check his Oka2 and Herc2 eye color estimator results. And with Oka2 Herc2 eye color estimator results, it looks like he's got hazel or light brown eyes once again. Let's go ahead and check what contributed to this score at the bottom here. At the bottom here, it looks like he is actually heterozygous genotype for blue eye haplotype 2. So he has um, one light allele in blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, here it says likely heterozygous genotype in blue eye haplotype 2. And it looks like he's got homozygous genotype, so he does have blue eye haplotype 1 as well, and he does not have blue eye haplotype 3. Very interesting. So, this individual does carry a lot of variants for light pigmentation of eyes and hair, and it's very possible for him to, you know, have children with somebody who's the same, who's got the same genotype as him. Obviously, different gender, but the same genotype in Okato and Herkta region. It's very possible and probable for them to have a blue eyed kid. Um, Let's go ahead and check what he scores for the polygenic risk scores. So it looks like for the polygenic risk scores, he is scoring very much below average odds of schizophrenia. It looks like it's a pattern, right? Isn't it a pattern where every Anatolian Neolithic farmer is scoring really low um, odds of schizophrenia? It looks like nothing was found that's relevant for type 2 diabetes. That's a bummer. And very low odds of Alzheimer's. Okay. For cancers, two risk variants for breast cancer out of 14, kind of slightly high, not too bad. And seven risk variants for testicular cancer out of 20, pretty much spot on average, very typical. One risk variant for celiac disease out of 12, spot on average, very typical. And zero risk variants for, I can't pronounce it, I'm just going to say GSS in, in space of it, out of 12. Once again, really typical. If he had any risk variants for that, that would be quite concerning and alarming. Let's go ahead and check his monogenic traits. It looks like he has heterozygous genotype in Comte's Valmet variation, so between Warrior and Warrior in Comte. However, Warrior in MAOA, so overall probably a little bit more Warrior rather than Warrior in terms of phenotype. So he's a Warrior in phenotype, which means more dopamine. And he's got two derived no gold renovators in DRD2 Pro, Pro, which means less dopamine D2 receptor sites. So those two in, combi in combination with each other kind of cancel out. You got more dopamine, but you got less dopamine receptor sites. So those ca those kind of cancel out, at least when it comes to dopamine D2 rece um, dopamine 2 receptor types, because there's a bunch of others. There is D1, there is D3, there is D4, there is D5, although D4 and D3 kind of come together with D2. So 
it looks like he does not have the A1 allele and TAC1. By the way, I want to say that this uh, genotype right here, two derived or two no-go learner variants in the rd 2 Pro for Lancine Pro, is extremely European. This is a genotype you will not find outside of Europe uh, or in the Middle East. You know, of course, Middle East as well, but you will not find... Maybe maybe you will find 0. Point something percent in Africa who have this genotype, or 0. Point, I don't know 0. 1 percent in China who have this genotype. But really, it's extremely European genotype, and it's most more common in Europe than anywhere else. It looks like this individual uh, does not have long form 5 HTTLPR. Once again, got short form 5 HTTLPR, slightly higher, or pretty much normal, typical average um, risk score, average odds of depression. This individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. If they took an ancestry DNA or a 23andMe test, they, the test would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. Of course, that's not the case because pretty much nobody outside of Europe has the European lactose persistence mutation and a lot of people outside of Europe are not lactose intolerant. So there's obviously some other genotypes. There's obviously some other variations that are uh, playing a role here. Uh, they're undiscovered currently. When it comes to the OXTR or empathy gene, it looks like this individual is heterozygous for both of the main variations in OXTR that have to do with empathy. So one sociopath, one empath variant. And not does not have type 1 diabetes, really good. The score for type 2 diabetes, we did see. Did we see? Did we see? Wait a second, did we see a score for type 2 diabetes? Let me check. It looks like, it looks like there is no score, but there is. Because there is... Um, even here on the panel, there's a couple of genotypes. Okay, so it looks like um, they kind of canceled out and we got a score of 1. That's really a, a, that's really atypical. I don't see that very often. So it looks like the score for type 2 diabetes is just straight up straight up dead average. Um, very interesting. I wasn't really expecting that. For hemochromatosis, it looks like this individual actually has... A, is This individual is a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. So... He's got heterozygous genotype here, and it's, it's pretty rare. All of these variants, or all of the risk variants for hemochromatosis, in this one, in this one, in this one, they're all really uncommon. So it looks like, it looks like this individual uh, is a carrier for one of them. But as it says here, most likely doesn't have hemochromatosis unless also is a H63D carrier, and he is not. H63D is this variation, so he's not a carrier for this. So pretty good, all right. He's got some alleles for the Celtic curse, but it looks like overall probably doesn't have hemochromatosis. In case you don't know what hemochromatosis is, it's an issue where your body can't regu regulate how much iron it stores. It stores too much, causes causes problems to the liver and kidneys, and like you die if you don't treat it. Um, it's most prevalent in the British Isles. That's why it's called a Celtic curse. When it comes to Alzheimer's, we can skip that. He's got AG here, which leads to lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight. So the GLE on this variation, once again, I, I will say, um, is super European. And the GLEO is really good. Like, it greatly improves your eyesight, uh, reduces the odds of myopia and nearsightedness. And it's really, really European. Like, you're not going to find the GLEO outside of Europe. So this is just another extremely European trait that this individual has. No micro P, I can't really pronounce that because of YouTube, but uh, you know what that is. And it looks like one fat gene variant in FTOs RS99 I'm not actually going to go through all of this. Uh, it's going to take up way too much time. There's too much stuff to talk about here. Yeah, just way too much stuff. We're going to skip to... What can, what, what can, we're going to skip to the allergies. Let's talk about that. It looks like this individual has, has got one allele for higher odds of allergies, but the odds ratio for the every T allele here is only 1.18. Not a very high odds ratio. And it looks like this individual does not have a peanut allergy, at least. Uh, doesn't have any risk variance for having a peanut allergy on the two SNPs that my trade predictor looks for. All of this stuff, I'm sorry. I, I, really, I really would like to go over this, but I feel like people's attention span is not very high people are not going to be able to power through this and uh, i want to improve my retention a little bit so we're going to skip that now let's move on to the ethnic calculator results as you can see this calculation was done with 513 snps we're going to go ahead and copy all of this here uh, we're going to copy all of this here and we're going to go ahead and put this into vaha duo yep um I'm, I'm just opening it, right? 
on the screen, right on the little pop-up window. I don't want to go ahead and open a different site. And let's go ahead and check who this individual is closest to. This individual is closest to Bulgarians, which I think are composed of two people. Followed by Global or Amphora Culture, followed by Bellbeaker, followed by Spanish, followed by Funnel Beakers, followed by British, followed by Bellbeakers from Britain. Yeah, okay, typical result. I don't really remember whether the Bulgarian was like Mediterranean or kind of Central European in its, in its ancestry. Uh, it's been a long time since I was compiling this little or oracle. So let's go ahead and check. Let's check what's up. All right. So when we run this sample, we get a result like this uh, for the mixed mode oracle. 49% Anatolian Iron Age Luvian, 18% Assyrian, 16% Ashkenazi Jewish, 14% Ukrainian, and 2% um, WES 56 Tolens from Germany. Uh, Tolens Warrior from Germany. Now, Ukrainian sample, I can tell you about the Ukrainian sample here. Something interesting about it, it's, it's very outlier. Uh, it's a very outlier sample. It's definitely not a typical Ukrainian. It's very uh, extremely northern shifted. So... This Ukrainian sample is uh, is definitely uh, compensating here for Assyrian and like Ashkenazi Jewish and Luvian, uh, all these very extremely southern or you know brown, I could say, in uh, racial terms groups. Let's go ahead and reduce that to three populations, and now we are getting forty two percent Jewish Ashkenazi, thirty percent Russians, and twenty percent Anatolian Iron Age Luvian. Okay. Uh, I think Russians were pretty southern, actually. The reference group for that, no, the people I uh, Russians is based on. I think it's four people that I used, and none of them are my family. Trust me, I did not use my family uh, in this uh, in, in the creation of the oracle. I left us out. So these are all people who are not my family, who are not my relatives. Let's go ahead and check four populations. With the four populations, it looks like the model is 47% Anatolian Iron Age Luvian, 22% Ashkenazi Jew, 16% Assyrian, and then 13.6% Ukrainian. Once again, the Ukrainian here is uh, a lot more northern than it really should be in reality. So, it's it, by the way, it's only based on like one person. So, yeah. Uh, you can you can substitute Ukrainian for like European hunter-gatherer here or something like something really northern. Let's go ahead and check with five populations. And with five populations, we are getting a result that looks like this. 47% Anatolian Iron Age Luvian, 19% Ashkenazi Jew, 17% Assyrian, and 11% Ukrainian, and then 5% French. French, from my memory, is pretty typical. And it's there's an underscore too, that's because it's based on two people. So yeah, it looks like a pretty typical, like, really Mediterranean result. Um... I don't have a reference group for Sardinians. Maybe if I added a reference group for Sardinians, if I found some Sardinian genomes and I added that to my Oracle, uh, maybe it would be the closest group to these Anatolian Neolithic farmers. I really don't know. But anyway, it is what it is. Thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And you can download this file in 23andMe format from link uh, which is in the description of the video. By the way, check out um, the dark mode. I love it. I love it. But I'm not going to use it in the videos because I feel like it's too difficult to follow.